Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be. Uh, this is Brian again, and I'm going to do something a little different today. I get people asking me this all the time when they're looking to purchase a new machine. Uh, once they've decided on a machine, <clears throat> they, especially someone who's just getting into painting, or even a homeowner who's looking to purchase something to do some, some of the work around their house or rental property maintenance-wise, they're not sure how to actually use one of these, so I have to go through a process to explain how to use a paint sprayer. So that's what we're going to do today. Show you how to use uh, the paint sprayer up to the point of actually application of the product. Uh, before we get started, we want to talk about safety. Uh, as usual, this is electric. Uh, we do have gas units. Uh, you also have uh, hydraulic pneumatic things of that nature but we're going to specifically deal with the electrical uh, sprayers so it's an electrical hazard uh, it's also high pressure so you want to keep that in mind just as when you're working on it high pressure can be very dangerous so wear the appropriate safety equipment prior to using the machine all right so this here is a Graco 390 uh, the 390 is very similar to the 395, 490, 495, 595, 695, 650 now. Uh, most all of your electric machines, regardless of the size, are going to be very, very, very similar, uh, including the Titan brand. So Greco and Titan are like Chevy and Ford. So you have two different manufacturers, but the main components are going to be the same from one machine to the next. Uh, now keep in mind, this is a working shop, so I may have to... Pause the video to take care of a customer or phone call, but uh, I try to keep the action on the video uh, as accurate as possible time-wise. So again, we had the, the Graco 390. This is a good little starter machine for any painter. It's also a good little backup machine for most painters. So when you're ready to, uh, to use this machine, what you're going to do, the last thing you're going to do is plug it in. So what, what you're going to uh, do once you get the machine home you have a fitting right here this is where your airless hose this is an airless hose that hooks up to that fitting right there so you'll take this out you'll screw your uh, hose on here and you'll do it with a wrench so that it is tight you don't want it loose you want it tight once you've got that hooked up, you hook the other end of the hose, and the hose itself is interchangeable. Both ends of the, take these off as well. They will go to the male nipple here and the male nipple on the gun itself. So this is your gun. You're going to screw your hose on here. You'll put a wrench here and on your hose and tighten it. This is called a live swivel. This allows you to pivot the gun while it's under pressure. Okay? So you put it on tight. You'll put it on tight. And once you've got your hose on, we're ready to go into uh, moving a little bit of product. So I always recommend anybody getting started for the first time or start of the day, don't just jump right into a gallon of paint or a five gallon bucket of paint. Ensure that there's no issue with the machine. Stick it in a bucket of water first or paint thinner, depending on what, which product you're gonna use. So this is your pickup tube. This smaller hose, and it's gonna be on all your machines, is called a prime hose. You can detach it from your hose, your pickup, or you can leave it on. Uh, I like to generally ride it a little higher so I can see what's going on here. This is a rock catcher. This keeps trash from coming out of the bucket, bigger pieces from going up inside of the pickup tube. So you're going to stick this down inside of your water. Once you've got this in your water, you're going to come to the machine. Now, on this particular machine, like I said, this is the Graco 390. And it's, it's going to be very similar. Some of the controls will be in slightly different places on different machines, but you'll be able to understand what they are uh, once you go through this process here. This is going to be your pressure control. And you can see you got a series of uh, gray, green, and blue, which in tell you that you're increasing pressure. The plus side is increased pressure, and it goes down from there. So initial startup, I like to use it just above... Uh, the starting point. Initially, I, I like to run everything on low pressure till you get ready to spray. This is your prime valve pointing back, pointing forward, pointing back or forward means it's going to your airless hose. 
pointing down means it's going to your prime hose, which is the little hose, okay? So we're gonna initially turn it down. This is your filter body. There is a filter inside of here. This cap unscrews, there's a filter. Screw it back on, good and hand tight. If it leaks when you're using it, tweak it with a wrench, don't over tighten it. And here's your on off switch right here. Down is off, up is on. Okay, so we've got it in our bucket of water. Our pickup tube is in our bucket of water. All right, and we got our pressure set to very minimal. We got our prime valve down and we're ready to start. Our hose is hooked up to the front, guns hooked up and everything. So we're gonna turn the machine on. The machine will begin to run. You'll hear it and it's not mistakable as to what's happening. The machine is gonna run. Again, our pressure is on low, prime valve is down. So once this is running, you're gonna watch this little hose here. So you got all of this in a bucket of water. You can hold this with your hand if you like. When you start to see water coming out of here, that means your main pickup line all through here into the pump is actually full of water, okay? So now you're ready to switch it over to your hose. All right, before we do that, while this is running and starting to prime up, you're gonna take this, this is your tip housing. Unscrews like this. Now you see where my, my right hand is. I'm behind the trigger. My fingers aren't near this trigger. Even though the gun's not hooked up, my fingers are not near the trigger. I like to keep them behind and, and once the gun is hooked up, you'll see I'll put, actually push the trigger forward so I don't accidentally spray myself. So continue to unscrew the housing. The housing is off. You'll see there's a black O-ring in there that needs to stay in there. This is your tip right here, okay? The tip comes out. If it comes out, you wanna make sure everything stays inside, but put it back in, you stick it in the hole, twist it, and it'll pop down, and then back in place. So again, this is running. You have water coming out of here, or paint, whichever, whichever way you choose to do it. Now, you're gonna take this gun, and you're gonna point it without the tip housing on it, and this is still down, you're gonna point it in your bucket of water or paint. You're gonna pull the trigger. The reason you don't do it from here, even on low pressure, once you pull this trigger, or once you flip it here, this begins to build pressure. So as soon as you pull this trigger, it instantly releases through this larger hole, okay? So we wanna make sure the prime valve stays down while we're priming. Pull the trigger into your bucket, hold the trigger down, and then flip it forward. What that does is it allows you to pull the trigger without high pressure and uh, without making a mess. Once you flip it over to the hose and pull the trigger, it stops it from the prime hose and kicks it to the gun. So you'll hold the trigger down, and if there's waste in your hose, then you want to spray that in another bucket. If it's, if it's your water, you can just recycle it back into your water. Once you've got a good steady stream of water, let go of the trigger. The machine will run for a second, then it will stop running. So the entire time you're doing this, that machine is still running. Once you let go of this trigger, the machine will run for a second or so, and then it'll stop. When it stops, that means it's under the pressure that you have set over here. Now, you're ready to put your tip and housing back on. So as I said before, when your hose and everything's hooked up, put your hands behind the trigger. I prefer, I don't, you got a trigger lock here, but like any particular safety, it's only as good as the maintenance. So I know if my fingers are behind the trigger and actually pushing forward, then I can't inadvertently push the trigger uh, and, and inject myself or someone else. So my fingers are pushing forward on the trigger because my hand's getting ready to go up in here. So I don't, I don't want that in danger of getting sprayed. So now I'm gonna take the housing, put it on and just screw it with your fingers onto the gun. The how notice my housing here is not spinning, just the fitting on the, the, the tip housing itself. Now once you've got it seated down, now you got to decide at this point, are you going to spray up and down? Are you going to spray left and right? If you're going to spray up and down, 
you want your housing, duck bill, some people call it, uh, if you're going to spray up and down, you want it like this because your fan's going to come out like that. Flat. Hold on. Hey. All right. As I said, working shop, so i got to stop from time to time. So your fan's going to come out like this with the housing in this fashion. If you turn it right hand or left hand, if you're going to use left hand, then you want to turn it this direction. If you're going to use your right hand, then turn it to this direction. Turn it over here and you make sure it's tight on the silver housing fit in there. If it's not tight, it's going to leak out through here. If you want to spray left to right, which is the way most people spray, you're going to put your tip on the side here. Now, your tip is self-cleaning if it's a Rack 5 style tip uh, or a Rack tip, period, Rack 5, Rack X. This looks just like an arrow. It's pointing in this direction. So when the tip does not turn anymore, the tip is correct. If it is slightly off, I just turned it that little bit, when you pull the trigger, it's going to blow paint all over you. See, when you turn the tip, make sure it doesn't turn anymore. It's called reverse to clean because if you're spraying and the tip gets clogged or trash in, it'll spray odd. You can take this tip and turn it completely backwards, 180 degrees, so it's pointing at you, and then point away from what you're spraying into a bucket, tap the trigger, just like that, you just pop it one time like that, it'll blow the trash out. I see my fingers, I'm not even hooked up, my fingers are behind pushing forward. You'll turn the tip all the way back till it can't turn anymore and you're ready to spray. Now, when that happens and you get it back to where it needs to be, I like to initially, before I spray, I'll put my hand here, pop it one time just to make sure this didn't loosen up any and blow back on me. If I pop it, nothing comes out and you're ready to spray. You begin to spray. So, this is your spray direction. This is clean direction. It seats down, seats down, okay? Now, people ask you what size tip do you need? This tip here, they'll tell you right on the tip, uh, on the handle, most of them will tell you what it is. This is a 515. Very simple. The first number, the five, you double it, that tells you how wide the fan is at about 16 inches away. So that's 10 inch, that's a 515. The 15 tells you the size of the hole that's in the tip. The 15 is a 15 thousandths orifice. So most people are going to spray it around a 15 to a 17, somewhere in that area, regardless of the width. The smaller that 15 gets to a 13 to an 11, the smaller that hole gets and the less material is coming out. Uh, the larger that hole gets, obviously the more material you got coming out. So going back to what we were talking about, you've turned your prime valve forward, you've decided which way you want your housing, and now you're ready to spray. So you'll pull the trigger and you'll have a mist coming out. All right. And it's going to be water because 50 foot of hose or thinner, a 50 foot of hose carries almost a quart of material. So once you pump that through, uh, when you first pull the trigger for your paint, you want to make sure that it's all paint, not your water. Now, if you started this in water, at this point, you would flip this over to your paint, okay? Um, which means once you flip it over to your paint, you still got water in the system, so you're still on low pressure. So once you flip it over to your paint, you can pull your prime hose off separate, and you'll bring it over to your bucket of water. You got this in paint. This will be in water because you don't want this dumping into your paint. And you'll easily, because you're on low pressure still, easily turn this. Don't flip it down. You just want to ease down into it. And that eases the pressure off of it. The machine will start to run. Once the machine is running, you're going to see water coming out of here. Water, water, water. Then once the paint starts to come through here, all right, you're going to come back to your gun. Finger behind the trigger. Take your housing off. Now, if you want to avoid a lot of this, you can go straight to your paint. I like to do this with the water or thinner first because if there's a problem with the machine, it's easier to deal with versus all the paint on it. Uh, you pick up tubing in the system. So now you got your paints coming out of here. You'll switch it over to your paint bucket. So you got paint, paint, paint on your, uh, on your prime hose. So you'll switch it back over. Now you got water in your in your hose, so you're gonna point this into your water bucket, pull the trigger while it's on prime, 
And once you got the trigger down, you'll flip it back over to the gun. It'll run, you'll have water, water, water. Then it'll spit and sputter, and then paint will start to come. As soon as the paint starts to come out, don't let go of the trigger. Just switch it over to your bucket of paint and let it run for a second. Once it runs and you got nothing but paint, you let go of the trigger, finger behind the trigger to hold it in place. Put your housing back on your gun. And uh, determine if you want to spray vertical or horizontal. Flip the housing to the appropriate side. Tight. Se uh, seated down so it doesn't turn anymore. Then pull the trigger. Psh, make sure you're good. All right, so you got paint. It's coming out. Now, you want to ensure you got the right pressure. So what you're going to do, this pressure that we initially start with is set too low. So we're going to increase this pressure. We're going to bring it up to about three quarters of the way from full. Now the way to tell if your pressure is set where you want it at, now you can run it wide open. The problem with running it wide open is it adds more wear to the machine and you waste a lot more material, you get a lot of overspray. Overspray is wasted money. So once you set it at about three quarters, you're gonna hold your gun up in the air and you're gonna pull the trigger and you're gonna look at the fan of paint that's coming out of here. The fan's gonna come out in a V shape. You look at that V shape and what you want to do initially, you want the pressure to be too low. So if you pull that trigger and the fan comes out and looks good and bold, you don't want that. You'll bring the pressure down. Spray it again. Psh, down. Psh. Once you get it to what they call fingering, which means the fan will come out like this. It'll be heavy on the edges, heavy in the middle, and light in between. Now, if you can't see it real well, if you'll take a piece of cardboard and spray down the cardboard, you'll see two lines on the outside, and then the center will be bold with gaps in it. That means the pressure's too low. The reason why you want it too low is because you can make your correct, you can see the corrections you make. If you just run it wide open, again, it, it will do the job, but you're gonna use a lot more material, you gotta move faster, more wear on the machine, and a lot more overspray. So now, fingering is bad. So then, you bring your pressure up. Just a little bit, psh, a little bit more up, until when you spray it, it comes out uniform across. So when you spray it across the cardboard, it's pretty uniform down the cardboard. At that point, you're at the optimal pressure to spray. That means you're not too high, you're not too low, and you're utilizing the machine and the paint as best as you can. Very little waste. It means you don't overwork yourself and you don't overwork the machine. Now again, like I said, you can just turn it wide open and go for it, but eventually that's going to Waste more material, more wear on the machine, and you're going to have to work faster. If you're just starting out, you're not going to need it like that. Now, that pressure setting, people say, what, what pressure should, should I set it on? That's going to vary throughout the day, the temperature, the product, and the size tip that you have. So, you can't say set it here because it's going to vary. The best thing to do is turn, have to in, incrementally increase the pressure until the fingering disappears. Okay. Once the fingering disappears, you're ready to spray. You're going to be approximately 16 inches away. And when you spray, if you're spraying up and down, you're not going to spray in an arc unless you're inside of a barrel. And you're not going to spray in an arc on a wall unless that wall is in a barrel or a drum. Your walls are not round. They're flat. So when you spray, you spray perpendicular, perpendicular, to the wall, excuse me, uh, parallel, parallel to the wall, parallel, parallel. You don't, you don't give it an arc. If you do, it'll spray light, then heavy, then light, and you'll have streaks through your paint. So that's not what you want to do. You also don't point, pull the trigger, and go. <clears throat> if you do that, you're going to have <clears throat> a heavy pattern here, and then it's going to even out. So it's going to cause a run. So you move, pull the trigger, let go of the trigger while you're moving. You move, pull the trigger, let go while you're moving. The entire time that this trigger is depressed, the second before you move, uh, depress it, you're moving. The second before you let go of it, you're still moving. So your motion, pull, release, motion continues. Motion, pull, 
release, continue. You always want to overlap one pattern to the other by 25 to 50%, depending on the tip that you have. Now, if you're too close, it's going to run. So start back a little bit if you have to until you get used to it because you're less likely to run. If you get a run, leave it alone. Don't wipe it off. You could try rolling it out with a foam roller or something like that, but don't wipe it off. Leave it alone. You're better off leaving it alone than trying to wipe it off. Uh, uh, foam roller was good to kind of help even it out to, to eliminate that so you don't have to deal with it later. Uh, then when you come back for your second coat, you can go back over it and it'll even out the sheen. Um, now once you're done for the day, you're ready to clean up, you're going to reverse the process that we just talked about. So your pressure is up, so we're going to go ahead and bring it down all the way and then bring it up about 25%. So we want low pressure. Now the entire time you're spraying, the machine's going to go on and off, on and off, on and off. Every time you pull the trigger, the machine's going to go on and off, on and off. That's normal. Now if you're spraying and you're going to use multiple buckets, don't take this out of a bucket and put it in another bucket. Use the same bucket, and what you're going to want to do is just refill the bucket. When the, when the level gets down, pour more paint into it. When you pull this out, you're going to lose prime, but you got to start all over. You don't want to have to deal with that. Leave it in the bucket, fill the bucket. When you're done, you're ready to clean up. So you're going to take this out of your paint bucket, and you're going to put it in your water bucket. Now, you've still got paint. <clears throat> in your machine and in the hose. Again, like I said, the hose has got approximately a quart of paint in it. Now, you can either waste it or you can save it. Choice is yours. But let's say we're going to save it. So you're going to take this off. You're going to hold it over your bucket of paint. And this is going to be in your bucket of water. Okay? So your bucket of water, wash all of this off. Hold this over your paint. Your pressure is on low because we've already turned it down. Your pressure's on low. And we're gonna easily, while you're holding this firmly, easily, because you're still under 3,000 pounds of pressure. And this hose is not meant to handle 3,000 pounds of pressure at a blockage. It'll rupture the hose. So keep it firm and then easily open the prime valve. And you'll hear it hiss. Psst. Boom, all the way down. Now you're ready to go. So the machine is running. <laughs> And it's pushing paint, pushing paint, pushing paint. When you stop seeing paint and it starts giving you water, then you can take it from your paint, bring it over to your, your pickup tube that's in the water, and clip it on. So now it's all in water and you got water running out of here. Run, 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 run. So you can recycle the water if you want. I generally prefer to have a waste bucket. Okay? So you'll run this over here in a waste bucket. And when the water, you know, you run it for about three or four seconds to get the water uh, pushing through the system, then switch it back over here and let it run. And while it's running, you're going to take your fingers on the trigger, behind the trigger, you're going to take your housing off. You're going to set it to the side. And you've got paint from here back to the... Uh, to the filter housing. So you're gonna save this paint. So you're gonna point this into your bucket of paint while the prime is on. Prime is down and the pressure is low. You're gonna pull the trigger in your bucket of paint. Once you pull this trigger, you don't release this trigger again. You'll flip this forward. It'll become stronger and you'll get a steady stream of paint. Paint, paint, paint will shoot down into your bucket. Then when it starts to spit and sputter and water starts to come, don't let go of the trigger. You're gonna shift it right over to your bucket of water or shift it over to your waste bucket. And you're just gonna let it run. Steady, steady, steady. Give it about a minute, minute and a half. Um, the fresh water not recycling is best because you don't have a residue left in it. But if you're gonna recycle it, run it until uh, about a minute, minute and a half or so. And then at that point, you're done. Don't let go of the trigger. You'll reach over here, turn the machine off, the back of the machine. Once you've turned it off, the machine will stop. The pressure will eventually die down to nothing. You can let go of the trigger, take your housing, fingers still behind the trigger, put your housing on. Get it 
fine. And the only thing you really got to do to this to clean the inside of this, there's going to be some residual pressure. You just pull the trigger, it'll spit just a little bit, and you're done. Now you can wash the outside of this uh, to ensure that it doesn't build up. That would be ideal because that can uh, affect the performance of your spray. Now, that's a quick basic run through. If at any time when you're spraying, let's say you forget to add paint to the bucket or for whatever reason the machine just is running like crazy and you pull the trigger and you got no pressure. Take a hammer and I'm not going to do it on this one because this is my machine. This is not my machine. It's brand new. You're going to, while it's running, you're going to hit it. Bam. 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 Just like that. Either here or here. If you hit it here, don't hit it right to left. Hit it left to right. That'll tighten this. If you hit it loose, it'll leak. So you'll hit it. One, two, three, four. Like you're driving a nail. And then the machine will more than likely, yeah, 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 it'll stop. It'll build pressure and stop. You get air in it or a small piece of trash and the system will stop picking up. Okay? Um, you got a filter in here as we mentioned before. You also have a filter in the gun. And you would take that out, pull that off. You unscrew this handle from this head. If you need to put it in a vise and a wrench, do that. The filter's in here. It slides in and out. Put a new one in. Screw it on tight. Don't necessarily do it with a wrench. And then you'll put your trigger guard back on. And you're done. When you're done with it, if it's cold weather, it's going to get cold, pump antifreeze into the system. Do not leave it sit with no antifreeze in it because if it freezes, it'll damage your pressure control. If you got any questions or not clear on something, I uh, apologize that I wasn't as clear as some of you may would like, but this will give you the highlights of what to do. Um, any questions, feel free to give me uh, a message. Be safe, and we'll talk with you guys again later.